up, but you're also our Heavenly Father. So as we come to worship you this day, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, Father God. And James, or Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, we can come boldly into the throne of grace. So Father God, we come to worship you, to serve you, to yield to you, to obey you, to cling to you, for you are our life and our length of days. And Father God, we've come to receive your word, Father God, and receive of your Holy Spirit, Father God. We do covet the best gifts today according to your word. We thank you, Father God, for the plan of redemption. Father, we'll give you all the glory and the honor, and we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being obedient. As you came into the earth, emptied yourself out, became a man, the second Adam, the last Adam. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus Christ. You gave us an example. You taught us, but you also bore our sickness and disease by the stripes on your body. You also became sin for us, and you went to hell in our place, and we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We owe you so much, but you were raised on the third day. You are now seated at the right hand of our Heavenly Father. And you do intercede for us on a continual basis. You are the head, we're a part of your body. So, dear Lord Jesus, as we give you permission to direct the service today by the Holy Spirit, John 16, 13, you said, how be it? When he, the Spirit of truth, is coming, he would lead you and guide you into all truth. And Jesus, you said that word, oh God, is truth. So, Father God, we want to thank you and praise you. And Holy Spirit, I, I give you permission to speak boldly through me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask for it. The tongue of a ready writer in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, you've caused my tongue, my tongue to be bold, Father God, that I can speak with all boldness and power and authority, Father, in, by, with, and through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll give you all the glory and the honor. We do covet the best gift. First Corinthians 12, 31. We also desire spirits with us. First Corinthians 14, 1, Father God, in Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, that your word declared you supply our every need according to your riches and glory, by, with, and through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, today every need is met. We want to give you all the glory and the honor, Father. And Satan, we bind you from this place in the name of Jesus, every principality, every power, and every ruler of the darkness of this world. You are commanded to get out of here and away from this building, this presence, as long as we're here in Jesus' name. Father, because any spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh may not be in his place in our presence in Jesus' name, the saints would say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Well, you may be seated. <clears throat> I, got a, I got a jolt this morning here a few minutes ago. I looked in the mirror and I looked at my eyes are still sleeping yet. I'm going, what the heck? I did wake up at 4.30, but I've been out in the sun quite a bit lately, and even though I wear sunglasses, it kind of makes, I can, it makes my eyes matter a little bit. I don't know why. I'm about to change my glasses or something. <clears throat> but anyway, I was, I was impressed this week, and I have a little confession to make on my own part. And, and uh, But anyway, uh, 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 phew, where am I going? <laughs> we're going to deal with ministering to the oppressed. And I was impressed. Uh, we need to realize when we're dealing with people, especially people, well, everybody is sick, but also terminal people. We have to realize how to minister to them. There's different ways, and people don't understand how God operates. They don't understand how the devil operates. And sometimes we do have to deal with demonic spirits. That doesn't mean a person is possessed. But as you go through scriptures, you'll find out that sometimes sickness and disease is caused by a demonic spirit. And sometimes those things have to be cast off and cast away. Again, that doesn't mean a person is demonic or possessed. We may deal with that a little bit later on on, on uh, what possession is and uh, the four different, uh, three different categories. But until it's such an important thing because there's so much sickness and disease. I get I get requests all the time for praying for people that are terminal, people that are really in bad situations. In fact, I have uh, one to pray for today. Her, her name, a little little girl about five years old. Her name is Riley Faith, and I don't. I think she's in South Carolina. And the message came to me, and I was asked if I'd pray for this little girl. And we will today here. Uh, it sounds to me like she has cancer. All they, they keep saying she has this pains in her stomach. She can't sleep. Well, and they ask for prayer. Well, it's only right to pray that way. But I need to know the specifics. You know, God is God. What, what is the situation? But I, I'd like to be able to pass on to her parents how to make their confessions, what they need to do on their part, because they do want a miracle. They believe that God is only, should only be saved through a miracle of God. That's the truth. But pe people have a part to play in it. They can pray and pray and, and say things all they want to, but there's things that they have to do as believers, especially as their par her parents. There's things that the parent needs to know what to do to protect your child, what you can do over yourself or your spouse in Jesus' name. But see, if we allow these things to happen, God has to allow it. Remember Matthew 16, 19, Matthew 18, 18? Whatever you allow on earth or permit on the earth has to be permitted in heaven. Whatever you forbid or prohibit in the earth is already forbidden, prohibited in heaven. So, the, the, in other words, the buck stops here. Jesus gave us the authority, gave us the rule, so it's what we do with it. We can't blame God when things go bad, but yet people do. Well, God did this. God didn't know. God didn't do that. 
You did that by because of either lack of knowledge or you're just rebellious or whatever it might be. But God didn't put those things on you. That God doesn't cause cancer to come on people. He doesn't kill people. We see in the word that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we see that, that God gives life. He wants us to live it more abundantly. And you have a right to a long, healthy, prosperous life. But we go to the Old Covenant. And uh, starting with Exodus there, when God gave Moses a covenant, said these, these are the things that if you'll abide by all these rules and my statutes, my, my ordinances, then you will live long in the earth. You'll be blessed for you do. And I am also the Lord that healeth thee. Well, God is still Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. He's still the great physician, the one who makes house calls. But if you don't know that and you don't know, well, maybe God doesn't, we pray it doesn't seem to work. And our church doesn't believe in that. Well, then you're in the wrong church. Hello? People sit in churches because they're nice people. Well, that's that's good, but a lot of nice people are going to hell. Well, that's for mom and papa and grandma and grandpa. Well, that's fine. But if you're not being taught or you're in the wrong church, if you don't know what God says in his word, what God means, because God means what he says, if you don't know his rules and his regulations, stipulations, and you want to sit there, well, no, no, it's, that's too heavy for me. Well, if it's too heavy for you, it'll cost you your life or your family's life, someone in there. So the Bible says in Proverbs, ignorance is no excuse. You can't say, well, I didn't know. Everybody has the opportunity to find out. And nowadays, especially, you have, dear Lord in heaven, we have internet. We have, dear Lord in heaven, everything's technical. You know, years ago, we didn't have all that kind of stuff back in the day. <laughs> Things were different back in, that was a good back, it was better, it was better, that was better back in the day. Back in the 50s and 60s, I'm telling you, some of the best 40s, 50s, and 60s, that was the best time of life. It really was. The family, the whole earth, the, 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 this country, everything else was just, nowadays, things have changed. Well, the devil's got in. But anyway, but, uh, so I was, I was impressed. We're going to do a little, lay a foundation before I get into teaching. In fact, be, I, because I was asked by Doug earlier today if I needed prayer and if I need, you know, and uh, right now I don't. But I did Tuesday. I know people, uh, I finally, Wednesday, I finally had my wife call my daughter and I said, ask your prayer team. I said, uh, I need prayer. <clears throat> and I don't usually say too much and I know what to do. And But anyway, I woke up Tuesday morning about 4.30 and I was very, uh, in my spirit, man, I was very, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, uh, something was going on very strong in there. And I knew it was a spirit of death trying to latch on to me. Well, I resisted the devil, and I kept speaking what the Word of God says, you know, and I did that, and I'd make my confession. Even though the thoughts were there, the feelings were there, it gets where I couldn't breathe very good, you know, and I'm going, now this, this is a lie. I said, Satan, I'm redeemed. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed me. Psalm 107.2, I say so. I'm delivered out of your hand, Colossians 1.13, out of the power of darkness in the kingdom of God, and seven gods to your love. And I go about saying these things, and it would ease up. And I, in fact, that morning I went to the gym. I worked out for two hours. When I was there, I'm thinking, not a big, not a big deal. Wednesday morning, I woke up the same thing, 4:30, 4:15, 4:30. The same thing is such a uh, in, in the inside, in the inward man. I knew it was something I had to do. Well, instead of read, I should have been doing a whole lot of praying and Holy Ghost in, and I wasn't. I was taking authority, but I was also speaking the word. I keep speaking the word over myself because the word declares what we have a right to. I keep saying Deuteronomy chapter. Chapter 30, verse 19, 20, especially, it says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. I command you, that's not an option, to choose life. So I go around saying, Father, I thank you. I chose life. I choose life. I receive everything because you are my life and length of days. If I cling to you, and I cling to you in the name of Jesus. Then I go on to say in, Saul, or in John 10, 10, B, Jesus came to give me life and give it more abundantly, abundant life, with joy, with joy that pulled over flows. In Psalm 91, 16, God says, with long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. I said, I'm not satisfied. I choose to go on. So death, no, you don't. And I also said, Psalm 18, 17. I shall live and not die. So I'm speaking about Genesis 6 and 3. So my days should be at 120. That's under the old covenant. That's minimum. That's, that's under the old covenant. And Deuteronomy 34 and 7, Moses was 120 when he died, and only because he had sinned. He couldn't go in the promised land. His eyes were not dim. His natural forces were not abated. He climbed a mountain. Joshua 14, 10. Caleb was strong at 85 as he was at 40. He wanted the mountain of the giants because God kept him healthy and strong as he promised him. See, people believe what God said. 
And when you believe what God said, you get the blessings from it. So sometimes you have, Paul said, you got to fight the good fight of faith. Well, the devil tries to destroy you. And of course, if I leave open the door because uh, I didn't uh, do what I should at nighttime, I should have prayed and bled, bled the blood of Jesus over the house, or different things I should have done, I, I open the door. So it's a Wednesday morning after I'd said my confession, I went back to the gym. I didn't work out two two hours again, a little over two hours, but I only went an hour and 45 minutes that day, I think it was. But I knew something was still wasn't right. You know, it was hard breathing to a point, to a point, a pressure, I should say pressure. And I had AFib a couple of years ago, and and uh, they did they did a, a cardio version where they give you a shock treatment, you know. I was right back. And I told my doctor, I said, one shock, one time I'll be in. Well, see, I got I caught it was my fault that I got into AFib. I, I know exactly where I messed up. And even then, I was working. I was working out three and four hours a day at the gym. Didn't even know I had AFib until I went to the doctor. The doctor said, "You got a regular heartbeat." I said, "Really?" He said, "I'm going to send you to an electrician." I said, uh, "What?" There's two kinds of ca cardios: electrician and plumber. Electrician shock you. The other one goes up through your, you know, does, does does the other work. But anyway, then a year later, I got it back again. And again, my open the door. But uh, the, the doctor this time was different. Different cardio cardiologist. She says, "I'm a." Uh, do cardio ablation where they go up through your groin and and uh, so they put me in the hospital and I kept saying no oh, I'm I'll be, I'll be fine and when the middle of the night they, they give me a pill it's called Ticasin I didn't know what it was then it's I guess to help your heart beat regular but three o'clock in the morning the nurse comes in Mr. Reynolds Mr. Reynolds your heart's back in rhythm it's been back ever since and the, nurse, the doctor come in that day and she says well I guess I don't get to do the cardio ablation I said no you're not <laughs> she didn't but I said Prayer works, the word works, but that doesn't mean, so if you realize, even born again, spirit-filled people can be attacked by the devil. You're not immune. If you open a door, the devil will oblige you easily. And, uh, but if you don't know, so we're going to set up a foundation here a little bit. But anytime you feel like impressed to pray, that's one thing as a pastor or a minister, I covet your prayers. I can tell when people, as soon as Julie had, had dying, get old Julie, wasn't very 15 minutes later, it was gone. Next day I go back to the gym, worked out over two good hours. Had had a problem since. But there was an attack there. I knew it. And first, but sometimes see what can cause a little confusion. That's my fault. When the gift of a word of knowledge is a manifestation, you sometimes you not only hear or know, but sometimes you feel what someone else is experiencing. It's not always yourself. And people get confused between that and, and uh, you, you, I'm sure through the Pentecostal movie you've heard about the discerning of spirits. Well, people say they have the gift of discernment. No such thing. That's the gift of suspicion. Gift of discerning of spirits, you either see or hear into the spiritual realm. Angels or bad angels, you see them or maybe a vision of Jesus, but that's through the gift of discerning of spirits. But most people say they, well, they have the gift of dis, dis, discernment. No, you don't. No such thing. What most people have, if they're, it's really the gift of word of knowledge, because the gift of word of knowledge tells you something present, past about things or things or people. So, but to, uh, so anyway, people understand how the gifts work. But we need to realize and lean on the Holy Spirit, because when we're praying for people, some we're human beings. We don't always we don't always get it. We don't always understand what's going on. You're praying for people, and you and you lay hands on them, whatever, you, and you go on. But there's sometimes, of course, the God will reveal things, but. The more, and if you have time to pray for people, that's why it's so important. And I, that's why before I pray for people, if I have the opportunity, I like to be able to get the word into them and then tell them what they should do afterwards so they can keep what the prayer, if they agree with the prayer. A lot of times, you know, you can go to every healing evangelist or person in this country and you, in fact, I gave it to you a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We talked about is it God's will to heal every person? Definitely. Because I said, is that God's will or do we are we missing our approach to God? Well, it's our approach to God. God never changes. If he willed to heal his covenant people under the old, we have a better covenant under the new Hebrews 8 and 6. So if we don't have healing in our covenant, we got shortchanged. But we didn't. Well, but we have doctors and nurses in hospitals. Thank God for that. And that's not how God operates. I mean, you know, God works through prayer and medicine. That's true. But because there's hospitals, doesn't mean prayer doesn't work anymore. God doesn't heal anymore. That's where people get confused. Well, that done away with that. No, no. God never changes. Jesus never changes. 
Now, thank God we have doctors and hospitals and medicine. If not, most of us would be dead by now. But because we did, we weren't brought up on what the covenant of God says. If we had been brought up from a child like the Israelites were supposed to, once they learned the covenant, they were supposed to teach their children. Remember, I taught you last week about the fathers. Fathers had a responsibility to teach their kids, kids, kids continually at home, when you're going, when you're sitting, whatever you're doing. Your kids be taught, you'll be teaching them the word, what God says that his covenant promises. So it's embedded within their spirit man. Because if you only have head knowledge, you'll miss it. Many people have head knowledge. They, well, I've heard that before. They don't, they know of the word, they don't know the word. Because if you know the word, John 8 32, what does what? Set you free. And if you totally believe that, John 8 36 says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. If you don't know that, you won't get it. But see, we're, we're supposed to teach people. That's so why I always want to put, if I can, put the word first. Because God watches over his word to perform it. You put the word into them, gives them something to cling to. It's life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. In, in Hebrews, uh, 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 bring that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get it in a minute. Okay. But anyway. <clears throat> so, but if, if people have no foundation... They don't have anything to cling to. They go by what their, what their reasoning is, what someone tells them. People will try to talk you out of your healing. People that don't know much about it and they want to get prayed for, they get, they get me getting the healing line and get prayed for, and maybe their own relative will talk them out. Well, God doesn't do that anymore. Well, you'll get it back again. But you have, that's why whenever, po whenever possible, the word should always go first. Jesus said, because everywhere he went, he, Jesus said, God sent me to teach, to preach, and to heal. The word first. So when you put the word first, you're putting God first because God has exalted his word even above his name, Psalm 138 and 2. And so in Psalm 119, 89, if his word is forever settled in heaven, that means we have assurance. Also, Peter said in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 24, I believe it is, the word of God is forever settled, settled in heaven. So God, we know that also in Isaiah. So we know that if we trust and believe God's word, we have a foundation. Jesus said, you know, in Matthew's gospel, and Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 6, he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, don't do what I say? He gave the example about the man who builds house upon the rock. This is the rock of the word. Solid foundation. When the storm's coming, it will come. The devil will see to that. But when that happens, you won't just go lost to the house. But if you have no foundation, when the storms come, there's usually a great loss. Well, Jesus kept emphasizing, he said, where is your faith? You have no faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's the only way you can get faith. You can't pray for faith. I mean, the disciples, loose gospel, Lord, increase our faith. He said, if you had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. No, faith comes only by one way. Hearing what God says, you have faith in God, you have trust in God in the Old Testament and Hebrew or Proverbs chapter two and three says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That word trust is the same word we use for faith in the New Testament. The Hebrew word for uh, trust is faith. So, therefore, they were told to trust in God with all your heart, not your head, not your feelings. Most Christians, a lot, I shouldn't say Christian, but most people are governed by what their body tells them. I don't feel like going here. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like going to school. I don't feel like going to work. What has that got to do with it? I don't feel like going to the gym sometimes at, at 7 o'clock in the morning, but I go. Don't I? Yes. And after I'm there, I enjoy it. it it's just part of me. Do I have to stay for two hours? No. Do I like to stay for two hours? Yes. But my wife used to always say she doesn't too much anymore. Don't overdo, honey. You might as well talk to the wind. <laughs> or back was back in the 80s. Talk to the hand. <laughs> yes, dear. I won't overdo. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, but see, but because when I go there, I put the word first. I claim scriptures for strength. Hello? Why? Because it works. When I don't, if, it, if I don't feel like, once I get started, because I've already confessed and give the scripture with the word, I stand on the word of God. So when I stand on the word of God, when I work out, 
I don't get tired. I don't have to just stop because I'm, I go home and take a nap. No. But in the scripture, I'll get to my message here in a minute. This is my intro. I haven't got to the message yet. The message is how to minister, how to minister to the oppressed. Well, maybe get their part, part A today. I don't know. But where was I going? Uh huh. What? Somebody's paying attention. Somebody. I get. I'll, I'll get. I'll get back to it. But it's it's important when you if you really believe what the word says, and you speak the word. And you act on a word, and I, I keep thinking the word after I get out of the gym. I say, Lord, I thank you. Your word doesn't return void, Isaiah 55, 11. I thank you, Father God, for multiplying my strength, Isaiah 40, 29, 31. I thank you, Father God, for or Philippians 4, 3, 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I thank you, Father God, for Ephesians 6, 10, to be strong, Lord, the power of your might. And another good one, Joel 3, 10. Let the weak say they're strong. When you don't feel like you can do it, say, Lord, I thank you. When I was sick back in Christ for back in the middle 80s, and I'd been sick for uh, 18 months there, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was rebelling. I, I didn't want to go to Raymond. <laughs> I didn't want to quit my job. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Lord, I found one scripture one day in Joel 3.10. So every morning when I was at Christ, I'd be, I'd be so weak. Well, I had an abscess in my body, and I, and I was like having a flu all the time. Weak. I couldn't hardly talk, couldn't hardly walk very far. Uh, very, very discouraging. And... Uh, Anyway, I got I found that scripture by the Holy Ghost, Joel 3.10. So I would confess it. Every morning I get to Chrysler, I confess Joel 3.10. I work through the day. I get done off work. I kind of collapse. But every day I'd use Joel 3.10. Why? Joel 3.10 works. The word of God will always work if you work the word. But you got, well, I'm going to try it. No. No. You got to get the word in you, then do it. When people are prayed for it. They need to, once you're prayed for, if you believe with a prayer, you need to say amen, and yeah, do what? Faith without corresponding is what? Dead. Many people will sit and sit and wait and wait for something to happen. No, no. If you really believed in the prayer, say, Lord, I thank you. It's done, it's done right now in Jesus' name. And you act on it. Well, I'll get somebody else to pray. Well, and you'll keep sitting. Or keep people go from place to place to place and back even years ago. Brother Hagin kept saying, well, some people go through every healing evangelist, Brother Oral Robertson, Jack Cole, or Billy, or not Billy Graham, but he, he was an evangelist, not a healer. Well, Kenneth Hagin, uh, all, all, Catherine Kuhlman, and they weren't getting healed. But they were believers. God expects believe, what, a believer, once you have the word, in, God expects, he'll meet you where you're at. But God expects you to grow. He expects you to get on your own faith. Hello. I mean, you can be prayed for, but you better use your faith then once you're prayed for. People are waiting. Well, if a person prayed, I'll get it. Then I don't have to do anything. No, 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 no. Because if you believe you've got it, then start praising and thanking him. Lord. I thank you. I've received my healing at whatever time it was on that certain day. I thank you, Lord. Regardless of what my body might say, your word cannot return void. Isaiah 55. But therefore, I'm healed. I'm the whole. I'm going to act upon the word in Jesus' name. You may fall down a few times, but the Bible says the old man falls seven times, shall he not rise again? But people fall down, like, oh, God, I better go back and sit down. No. The truth, faith is so strong in you, you, it doesn't matter what it feels like. Your body, body said, body, shut up. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 20, 27, I believe it is. 27? 9, 29. I, I buffet my body daily. Who, who? The spirit man makes the body do what it's supposed to do. The body doesn't control the spirit. Most people, the body controls their spirit. We're supposed to control our flesh. I think it's 27. My brain. Uh, 27? Thank you. Okay. That's why I thought. <laughs> yes. See, but see, if you don't, like, if you don't bring another subjection, that means your body will govern you or rule you because you'll go by what you feel like, what you, well, because your body, your body will speak to you 24 hours a day. It will. And you, you'll know everything, whether you're feeling tired, feeling hungry, feeling weak, feeling sick. You'll know. You'll know how your body, your body going to tell you. 
And it's a good warning device, but we have authority over our body because the word of God, we can take authority in Jesus' name on the word of the living God and stand on his promises because they're all yes and amen. I better get my message before. That's just the intro. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> so we want to, let's go back to Isaiah. And in case you don't remember, that's in the Old Testament. Little humor, very little. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> We're going to deal a little bit with Satan, demons, devils, and evil spirits, and, and what they do, and how they operate, and how they how they manipulate people, or control people, or even deceive or possess people. <clears throat> but starting with verse uh, twelve, uh, I'm, I'm trying to read this now. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He was one of the archangels. He was before he was Satan. He was Lucifer. You were cut. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations, you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I'll exalt my throne. There's a period of time, the earth, scientists say, is about 4.5 billion years old. Well, man's only, man creation's only been on here about a little over 6,000 years. So, again, what happened to the dinosaurs? What happened? See, God's always been. That's hard for people to understand. We think maybe he just created the earth 6,000 years ago. No, 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 no. So there was something here before Adam, because Satan was in control. He had a throne. He, and we go on through here, we'll get to Ezekiel a little bit. He was in charge of worship. So apparently there was something here in the earth. We don't know exactly. The Bible gives us some light, but not a whole lot of light. But if he had a kingdom and he had a rule, he says, I'm, I'm going to exalt my throne. So he had a throne above the, above the heavens. I'm going to be greater than God. We're going to go here now. Above, against, above the stars of God. I will also sit on the Mount of the Congregation the further side of the north. That's where Almighty God is. Scientists will tell you there's something way up in the north. They can't, they can't figure out what it is way up. They used to call it a black hole. It's not a black hole. I'll, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'll be like, I will be like the Most High. But you shall be brought down to shore or the lowest depths of the pit. Remember, hell has compartments. Remember when Lazarus died, he was taken by angels into Abraham's bosom, which was in the depth of the earth. Uh, uh, the rich man, when he died, he was in hell. And he said, he lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He said, send Lazarus over and, and let him touch his finger while touch my tongue. And, and uh, 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 Abraham said, no, there's a gulf between us. We can't, you can't go there. We can't come here. So there's compartments of hell. And he goes on to say, uh, people who see will gaze, and they'll say, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the worlds a wilderness, who destroyed the cities, who did not open up prisoners, his own prisoners? Let's go, and we'll jump real quickly to, to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. This just tells you a little bit about Satan and, and Lucifer now. Verse uh, 13, well, it's verse 12. Son of man, take up lamentations for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord, you are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, full of beauty. You were in Eden. He's not talking about a man. That king, you remember in Daniel, when Daniel had fasted 21 days, and when the Gabriel finally got to him, he said, the prince of Persia had withstood me. I had to call for Michael the archangel. Well, it wasn't a human being that withstood him. It was one of the wicked spirits in the heavenly places. We'll get to that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. He goes on to say, uh, <clears throat> you were the seal of perfection, your wisdom and perfect and beauty. You were in the garden of God, your every precious stone of your covering. He must have been something really to look at because it goes on to name the stones, every precious stone, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, turquoise, the emerald, the gold. Well, the workmanship of your timbrel. So he was in charge of music. You wonder why? See, music should be unto God. There's so much perversion in music nowadays. See, for me, it's, I think, it, that's just my opinion, it started during the 70s, the late in the 70s, in the heavy metal. Hello? Well, we like that kind of stuff. Is it, is it doing anything to praise God? No. Most of that, what did it bring about? Just like in the 60s, Woodstock. The old, the old love thing. That was, that, was a, that was a God kind of love. That's when the hippie come out. Love, peace, you know, smoke a joint. No. No. <laughs> but see, People try everything to try to find peace or relax. You don't ever find peace without God. With God, there's peace. Without God, there's no peace. 
Anyway, so as I say, uh, uh, you were prepared on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were in the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in, in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. <clears throat> so uh, until that time, so again, he would, there's something here in this earth. We don't know what we know. There's some kind of, that's maybe, maybe where the demons come from because there's demons and evil spirits. But th those are the ones we'll get to where they get into people and cause all kinds of havoc. But so apparently there was something here. Was, go back to Genesis chapter one and verse one and two. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse two, and the earth was without form and void. Now, if you, if you, Hold your place. Well, let's go back to Isaiah real quick. I'll give you two in Isaiah. Isaiah tw 24, first of all. I'm trying to show you that there was, there was uh, what did I say, 24? Is that what I say? Yeah, 24. I'll get there. I'll get there. 24, verse 1. <clears throat> Behold, the Lord makes the, the earth empty and makes it a waste, distorts its service and, and scatters abroad its inhabitants. Okay, then we're going to, to Isaiah 45. Goes on to say here, we're going to see, we're 45. And. Uh, Verse 12, I made, the, I made the earth and created man on it. I and my hand stretch out the heavens and, the, and, and all the hosts I have commanded. I raise him up and in righteousness I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. Now, now let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. So God, showing you God, God makes the waste, but why do you make it a waste? Judgment. Je, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth, and indeed was without form and void. God creates nothing without vo void or waste. God didn't create it that way. Judgment had to come to create between Genesis 1, 1 and 1 and 2. Well, if we go back to uh, Genesis chapter 1, when God said in verse 26, let us, Elohim, make man in our own image, our own image in our own likeness. So male and female created he them. And God blessed them. He said, be fruitful, multiply, and do what? Replenish the earth or refill the earth. You can't replenish something that hasn't been replenished. So there had to be a flood before Noah, before, before Noah's flood, before Adam was created. Because if God doesn't create anything, a waste or a void, what happened between one and two? Judgment. So whatever when, Luc when Lucifer fell, when he became Satan then, judgment had all that, whatever it was, kind of pre-Adamic, pre was destroyed. Because we know they find bones from dinosaurs and they find different things, you know. And uh, so the earth has been here for a long time. But anyway, Noah's flood was a second flood. And you go back to Genesis chapter 9 again, Noah's, when God said to Noah, I said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth or refill the earth again. But that's why he put the rainbow. The true rainbow is a sign of what? A covenant of God, not, not the... I'm very careful what I say. There's different rainbows. <laughs> There's different rainbows out there. But God's rainbow, in fact, it has more colors in it. God's covenant promise that he will never destroy the earth by flood again. So when the first time we were, I really reckon we come back, we were coming back from Sea Rapids one time. Chris had us go over to pick up some a couple cars, my wife and I and Bob. And uh, we were coming back, we were on I-80 going, going back east towards Denver. And there was a double rainbow. I almost wanted to stop. It's like, whoa, that's God's coming. You know, it just really hit me like that. God's coming. He will not distress. That's, hello, God. You know, <laughs> you're, yes, I, he's, this is my covenant. God has a covenant with us. It's a blood covenant. But most Christians don't understand what God has, the strength of the blood covenant. Israel was taught what the strength of the blood covenant meant. If you broke the covenant, you're on your own. Too, too many times Christians don't know what the blood covenant is or the strength of the covenant. Therefore, they rely on their own thoughts, their own ways, what someone tells them instead of what God's already told them. Jesus said, remember we told you a few weeks ago, 
John chapter five, Jesus said, I come to do the will of him. I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him that the will of him that the will of him that sent me. I'll get it out. Read John chapter five, read it. Verses, I think it's 19 and 30. So Jesus was God's perfect will. Remember in Matthew chapter 8 when, when Jesus had to come down from the mount and, and a leper met him? He bought, in fact, Luke says he fell down before him and worshiped him. If he said, you are, he said, are willing. He said, I know you can. I don't know if you will. Most people, even believers, don't know if he will or not, or if it's a will every time. God's will is every time if we qualify. If we move away and don't listen to what he says and trust something else or try to do things, you can flip-flop around all you want. God only has one way. The more we find, the more we trust this is the way. It's not just some, well, men wrote. Men wrote as they're moved by the Holy Spirit. The word of God is God spoke, God anointed. So when we speak the word, God's spirit is in action. Jeremiah 1 12. He watches over. His word, Isaiah 55, his word does not return void, but prospers and accomplishes where we send it. So if you receive the word, you and God are in agreement. But you have to get yourself to the point where I told, I, yes, I do believe it. And like God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, meditate upon this word day and night. Not a case, well, whenever it's easy or convenient for you. you know? get it, in other words, get the word in you before you ever speak it out. Then you will prosper. And have great success. But if you and I don't get the word in us and keep it in us, so your spirit man needs to be fed on a daily basis. What? The word of God. Jesus said, according, he told Matthew 4 and Luke 4, according to Deuteronomy 8 and 3, man does not live by bread alone, but by every utterance that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why Jesus said, my words are spirit in your life. If you get the word in you, you have life in you. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. Thank God for good doctors. God turns things around. God, with God, all things are possible. And all things are possible to him that believes. But you got believe what? What God says. Not mental assent. Heart knowledge. So in fact, Paul said it to his letter in, in 1 Timothy 4. He said, the Spirit speaks expressly, emphatically, that in the last day, men will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and demons of, de demons of devils. Talking to the believers. You're not talking to the world. You're talking, talking to Christians. You get caught off in these different, <clears throat> some new thing. No new thing. If it's, if it's not in the Word, it's, it ain't there. It's not God. But I was praying and fasting, and I got this revelation. Is it in the word? No, it's beyond the word. It's beyond the word, it's beyond God. <laughs> you haven't got no God. Malachi 3 6, God never changes. Hebrews 13 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God the Father is constant, God the Son is constant, the Holy Spirit is constant, the Word is constant. So what's inconstant? Man, is that a good word? Is that, is that the right word? I, I got to ask the English teacher. <laughs> I did. English was my high my high school thing. I didn't care about English in school to begin with. I guess I could. Huh? It was not your forte. It was not my forte. I thunk it. I no, I didn't like. It. No, I can. I can speak halfway decent English. I guess I don't have too much slang. But anyway, anyway. But she was proficient in sentences and diagrams. I'm like, gee, really? Nouns, adverbs. I didn't care about it, so I didn't study it. Anyway, anyway. But anyway, so if, if we if we find out then what God's God says in his word, uh, is it still God's will? And, and we when we're ministering to people, there are times when you will have to deal with a demonic spirit. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Brother Hagin was saying one time, this was back in the back in the fifties. Yeah, in the fifties. But in nineteen fifty two, Lord had a he had a vision of the Lord, and the Lord told him I'm gonna teach you on Demons, devils, and evil spirits, and how they operate. But anyway, he was in a service uh, sometime after that, after the Lord had taught him that. And he was, uh, this, this one pastor friend he knew came to him one day and before the service said, my, my niece has cancer of the lung and, and uh, she's had to quit work. She's got two kids 
and uh, I've taken her to two different, uh, uh, um, what, what do you call it? Huh? Well, yeah, they got, he had used a different name, but specialist, yeah, where they, where they check people out. Anyway, <coughs> anyway, uh, he, she, he brought her the service, and but the doctors have said, now, you, if you don't get your lung operated on now, you go to the other lung, you're, you're going to die. Because you can't live without, you can live with one lung, but not two, without two, you can't live. And uh, she, but she checked around, and she knew two women, one, both of them had lung cancer. One had the operation and lived a little bit longer. The other one died. They both died. She says, well, if I'm going to die anyway, I'm not going to die and then owe my uncle or anybody because her uncle was going to pay for it. And uh, so she, he, he brought her to the healing service. And every Tuesday and Friday, Brother Hagen would have healing. He was there for two weeks. He laid hands on her on Tuesday. Nothing happened. Or back on Friday, laid hands on her again. Nothing happened. Same thing the second week. The pastor asked him, the other pastor was hosting a place, asked him to stay another week. He did. Well, that following Tuesday then, when she was in line, she went to lay hands on her. He was in the spirit. The gift of discerning of spirits was in operation. He saw into the spirit realm. He saw a demonic spirit latched around her back. So he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you foul spirit, I command you to loose her and get off her and go. And she said, I think dropped on the floor. Just kind of whimpered a little bit. And he said, and get out of this building. And he said, now, everybody else around her heard me speaking. He never heard the demon speak back. That's the gift of discerning of spirits. You either see or hear into the spirit realm. And another time he said that he was in a service with a guy that <clears throat> the guy was declared him mentally insane. And uh, they were getting ready to take him to the mental hospital. Back in the days, they used to call them uh, insane asylums. Nowadays, they call them mental wards or hospitals. I don't know what they got different class for. But anyway, <clears throat> Brother Hagin laid hands on him and he went back to pray for someone else. And he looked over and he saw in the spirit realm, again, through the gift of discerning his spirit, he saw a demon. He said about the size of a monkey. He said it wasn't a monkey, but about that size, he thought, or a chimp. <clears throat> had his arm around the guy's head. So he walked back over. He called the guy over. He said, come here, and he cast that thing off him. He said, you have to go. And the thing dropped down. And he laid there and whimpered. And, of course, he cast him out. And the guy said, something snapped in my head. He had, so sometimes you have to deal with a situation. We have to deal with spirits. They're, they're, they're not always there, but... If we, in fact, if you go back to Ephesians real quick, people think, "Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer. I, I can't be bothered by that. Don't they can't mess with me?" Well, I'm use for you. Ephesians chapter two. Where am I going? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter two, verse one. <clears throat> And you, made, and you he made alive who were dead in trespass and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. You also, so, so one way or another, second, remember 2 second Corinthians 4, 4, for the God of this world is blind their eyes, lest they see the light of the glorious gospel. Satan can blind anybody's eyes. They can deceive you by the things you hear, the things you are impressed with. That's why you have to test the spirits out. You have to check things out according to what the Word of God says. But people don't take the time, or they don't know they don't know anything about it. So, like I said, they sit in churches that don't teach anything, and they may have a good fellowship time. And they might, you know, if you're going to church just to get a fellowship, you're, you're missing the boat. Fellowship should be there. The word and growth should be most important. So you increase in your learning and knowledge of God and your relationship with the Lord and Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Church, there should be growth. Peter said, First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, desire the sincere milk of the words you may grow thereby. So if you even if they even in those churches even gave them a little bit of milk, they grow somewhat. But they don't grow. I, I, I don't mean to make fun, but or light, but that's why I guess sometimes they call them pews. People stink. They're dead. I mean, spiritually, spiritually dead, not physically. They probably are all cloned up. But I mean, <laughs> I, going going to church is correct. Being baptized in water is correct after you've accepted Jesus Christ. You don't put the cart before the horse. If you go through the scriptures, there's only one way to be saved by receiving, accepting Jesus. Romans 10, 8, 9, 10. The word is near you. It's in your mouth. If you confess, you can do it. If you believe in your heart, Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, Lord, thou shall be saved. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'll back up. Okay.
Well, I'm going back to Romans real quick here, what I just quoted, but also <clears throat> it was in verse 8, 9, and 10. <clears throat> but uh, verse uh, 13, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom not, they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Preachers are supposed to teach and preach the word of the living God. You're preaching life, preaching life. Everything about God is life. Everything about the devil is death and destruction and corruption. When we're, the closer we get to God, the more we walk in the fullness of life. God wants to have, live us, have us live a long, full, abundant life. That's why John 10.10, 10, he said, B, I've come to give you life and give it more abundantly. I amplified a life of joy the full till it overflows. Not a life of just barely getting along. Sick all the time. Can't afford to go to the doctor. Can't afford to do this. Can't do this. Two weeks to do that. No. <clears throat> I, like I say, I keep, and I remind God different times. I go back to my ancestors. You go back to Adam, 930. Jared, 962. Methuselah, 969. Noah, 950. I mean, do you suppose they were just sitting around and all saggy baggy and, and uh, didn't know anybody? Who's doing you outside your mouth? Who are you? No. They had sound mind. So what, what happened? Well, the curse has come in, but if we go along with, with what the Word of God said when God gave to Moses, if we follow God's plans and God's ways, we'll be blessed in every area of our life. <clears throat> we've, been, you know, this, this, we've been needing rain for a while. It keeps saying it's going to rain, and they take it off. The screen, take it off, take it off. And we going. We were going. My wife and I were going out for supper on Friday night. <clears throat> I said, you know what? If she wanted me to, our outside nozzle doesn't work, so I can't water the or bushes and the uh, raspberry bushes for Chase and Delaney and whatever. But anyway, so and I, I said, you know what? I said we have a covenant with God. We're supposed to be able to have the rain, the former rain, the latter rain. And they kept moving it yesterday, and I said, I said earlier in the day, I said, Father, in the name of, and we prayed together, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we, my wife wants rain for her raspberry bushes. But I said, there's farmers around here that need rain. And Father God, we're asking for the rain to come. Well, I'm thinking, about, why didn't I think of that before? I'm trying to worry about trying to get that nozzle fixed, or, which is fine, but I'm just saying, I have a covenant with God. He said in Isaiah 43, 25, 26, put me, put me in remembrance. Plead your case. Father, I thank you. I have a covenant with you. I'm blessed in every area. My wife needs water. Give her water. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm saying that's, that's a trivial thing to a point. But in every area, we have a blood covenant with God Established to want better promises. And if Israel's promises were so strong and so powerful that everything they did, they were blessed for coming in and going out, the head, not the tail. Nobody could def defeat them. One person, you come, enemy comes against you one way, they'll flee in seven ways. You know, you're the head, not the tail, the butt, but not the beneath. Well, why doesn't the church world think that way? Well, as I said before, if the church would have stayed based from the book of Acts on by 300 AD, Gentiles came in, men started putting their own doctrines in there. You're getting away from the basic foundation. And you're away from the basics, you're out there on your own. God can't bless it. God can only bless people so far. He'll bless you as far as he can. He'll meet you wherever you're at. He'll try to. Hello. But we are supposed to teach people what God, who he is, what he will do. If he said it, he will do it. If he extends his hand, you can't stop it. God's not a man that he should lie. God can't lie. It's impossible, the Bible says. So if, you're, if you get yourself where you're totally convinced this is the word of the living God, nothing or no thing will move you. Yeah, but I think that's your problem. Isaiah 55. My thoughts are not your thoughts. In my ways, your ways. As high as heaven is above the earth, so my thoughts above your thoughts, my ways above your ways. I think it's verses 8, eight 9, and 10, I believe it is, in, in Isaiah 55. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm not going to where I was going here, but part of it. But we, we, I do need to pray. I do need to pray for a couple people, three people, actually. The, 
the little girl we're going to pray for here in a moment or before we even take up a communion. Her name is uh, Riley Faith. I believe she's about three years old or five years old. And uh, she, they put her in hospice. Uh, but God is still able. And when I, the person that got in contact with me about this, I gave them things that should be done and should be said. And they don't have an address to get to them. So I said, well, so we're going to look the situation up. Then we have two people out in California. Uh, both of them are drug addicts. And uh, I know of I know the mother. I don't know the two people, the daughter and granddaughter. But uh, one's 56 and one's 38. But they've been they've gone to rehabs and they get out and they don't stay clean very long. And the one, the older one, her boyfriend, when she got out of jail, uh, got her back on drugs again. They they want to live in her car. Well, that's that's nothing but addiction. But if and I, so I asked this person, do they want to be free? She said, no, they want their drugs. Well, we'll pray that God will open their eyes to the truth and pray that God would send laborers into her path or else won't claim their souls for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so Heavenly Father, we pray first of all for Riley Faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know the whole situation with her and with the stomach. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's cancer. I don't know. But Father God, we curse cancer and every foul thing is attacking Riley Faith in Jesus' name. Father God, only by your extended hand, Acts 4 and 30, and there is no distance in the spiritual realms of Father God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cause your Holy Spirit. They're asking for a miracle. You are the God of miracles. So we ask you to stretch forth your hand to heal. The signs and wonders might be done. You will spare Riley Faith's life, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I bind the spirit of death from Riley Faith in Jesus' name, the spirit of cancer. I command you to loose her and let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are loose from your assignment in Jesus' name. And Father God, send people born again, spirit-filled people, Father God, will minister the word and minister power into that child, into that family, Father God. Cause them to get there and come there, Father God, and go there in Jesus' name. Also pray for Laura and Nicole. The two are on drugs, Father God. We claim their soul for the kingdom of God. Father, I ask you would send laborers in their path, and Father God, you would, you would deal with their hearts. We bind up Satan, a strong man, and every addicting spirit, a spirit of addiction from those two in Jesus' name. We bind you, command you to shut your mouth, Father God, shut your mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Father God, you send people and put it in their heart, Father God, at least bring it before them. Give them no peace and rest. If they want to, they want to be free. Realize they can be free, that God, that you do love them. So send laborers continually in their path, Father God, day and night, bringing the word forth before them, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, I guess it's time to take up communion, I guess. <clears throat> I'm also going to, uh, something else. <clears throat> I'm going to put this Zoom out here. We're on every Wednesday night, except, well, last Wednesday night, we're not. If I, if I, we're on every Wednesday unless I, unless I say something. So I shouldn't have to say it. I can, but I, anyway. So people out there, if they want to be on Zoom, it's 871-361-6547. Then you hit join. Then you go to prayer. Is the password. Then you hit join. Do not hit video, because if you hit video, then you'll be on. So you just you'll get you'll get a picture of me, but you won't you won't be in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, eight seven one three six one six five four seven prayer in Jesus' name on Wednesday night at seven o'clock. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> I didn't even get part of my message, but we'll get part two probably next week. Thank you. Romans. And again, when we, when we take up communion, it's not just a ritual, something we just do. This is something that's very sacred to our Lord Jesus Christ. He instituted that the night before he was betrayed. It's called the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> His Passover meal, our Passover meal. Verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 11. Paul said, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, the Lord Jesus, on the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do is often you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death <clears throat> till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner, of the Lord in an unworthy manner, would be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, this reason, <clears throat> excuse me, many are weak, many are sick, and many die. So if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So Father God, according to your word, <clears throat> excuse me, First John 1, 7 and 9, you said if we would confess our sins, you're just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness. So, Father God, we come before you now confessing sins of omission, commission, Father God, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so, Father, we thank you now that our sins are totally annihilated by, with, and through the blood of Jesus Christ. You remember our sins no more, Father. We want to thank you and praise you now. We're back in right standing with you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so that scourging, that, that whipping that Jesus took, and again, sometimes we don't get the reality of what, excuse me, what he really went through. I don't know if you've ever been spanked with a, I mean, when I was a kid one time, I got spanked with a, Willow, willow switch on my ankles because I was someplace I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> it didn't feel very good. But he was whipped with all those stripes from his ankles to the back of his neck. Back was bleeding. In fact, the historians say that you just, when, they, when the Romans beat people like that with a scourge because it had, it had metal on it and glass and it would pull it back and rip the hide right off you. The ribs would be exposed, etc. So he paid a he paid a horrible horrible price that we might be sick, free from sickness and disease and walk in divine health. So, dear Lord Jesus, as we remember what you've done this day, as you took the bread and you broke it, dear Lord Jesus, your broken body, you paid a price for sickness and disease. We accept what you did, Lord Jesus Christ. We receive healing in our physical body and strength and soundness and wholeness and divine health in Jesus' name. I'll partake. <clears throat> Then he took the cup. So this represents my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for shedding your blood on Calvary's tree. Father, thank you because the blood covenant is the strongest of all covenants. Jesus cut the blood. He was the perfect sacrifice. He's our Passover lamb, the spotless lamb, the perfect, pure blood. So, Father God, we raise our cup and because now we see in Hebrews or Galatians chapter 4, we're now sons and daughters of God. We can call you Abba, Daddy, Abba, Father. We're also joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So, Father, we come before you now, putting members of our blood covenant. Satan, we also tell you you're a long ways away, but take your hands off God's blood covenant people. We're blood bought, blood washed. First Corinthians 6 and 20, we, we've been bought with a price. Therefore, we will glorify God in our body and our spirit, which are his. So, Father God, we drink this cup day in Jesus' name, all partake. <clears throat> <clears throat> ties, 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 ties and offerings. <clears throat> All I can say is the glory is here. <clears throat> and and uh, the latter glory, the, the latter, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former. And the outpouring, the former ladder range, the ladder, former ladder combined, the glory is going to be so strong and so powerful in these last days. So expect to partake and be a part of that glory by loosening your faith and be a partaker. When we're gathered together, the glory shows up. The glory is here every Sunday. It's what people do with it. If you, and if, if, if you have a need and you don't grab a hold or ask for prayer, shame on you. I'm failing. I'm failing in my job. 
But all I can do is make it available. Be, 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 phew, yeah, be, not a, not a bumblebee, but be like the woman with the issue of blood. She just said, but if I can but touch him with his garment, I'll get it. So, also in Luke chapter 6, verse 18, 19, when Jesus preached the word, all that were sick and all that were demon, tormented, were healed and delivered. So, amen. Heavenly Father, as we, as we come to you now, Father God, bringing our tithes and offerings, Father, we come to worship you in this area of our giving, Father God, because that's worship unto you and obedience unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus. You said, verse 8, we're in Malachi 3, where will man rob God? And Father, we choose not to rob you. You said, but you have robbed me in your tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Christ has redeemed us from the curse, and we're not going to put ourselves back under the curse because we're going to be obedient to your word, Father God, in Jesus' name. So you said, bring in the whole tithes and offerings of my stores that may be food in my house, and now try or prove me, or cry me now, and says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you, to pour out blessings upon you, which there's no room for you to contain them all, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring our tithes and offerings, Father God, in obedience, in love and submission, Father God, thanking you, knowing that, Father God, we'll have a rich, full, bountiful harvest as they name their seed and claim their harvest. We thank you, Father God, they will also, Hebrews 1.14, loose their ministering angels to go out and cause the harvest, plural, to come in. So, Father God, we thank you, no matter what's going on in the world, our harvest will be there because we're obedient to your word. You're our provider. Still providing in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Saints said, Amen. You might, you might need prayer and have a prayer request or whatever. I'll pray for you. Yeah, just make prayer. I'll pray for you. Pray, 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 pray for people out there first. Father, I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice. If they have a need, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And you supply that every need, Philippians 4 and 19, Father God, but touch them from the top of their head, the soles of their feet. If they're desiring a healing right now, Father God, or deliverance, Father God, you're the God who's more than enough. And let them know that, let them have the reality that Jesus Christ has already set them free, he's paid the price. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Father, we thank you, praise you now, as you stretch forth your hand to heal, that signs and wonders might be done by, with, and through the name of your holy child, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The saint said, Amen, amen, amen. Uh, when uh, Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes from the lad, another time he took a few fishes and seven loaves. But this time he, he took the five loaves and two fishes. He lifted up to you, Father God. He, he asked you to bless it. Father, we're asking you to bless this seed in the name of Jesus. Cause it to come to a rich, full, Bountiful harvest. Father God, they're good soil. Father God, they expect they're going to receive a good, rich, full, full, not half, but full, bountiful harvest in Jesus' glorious name. We thank you for it now, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yeah, you had something? Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Uh, 